Hello, hello, it's Stamplet here. Here's part 12 of 25 of the College Entrance Test Review. Credits to the Review Masters for providing me with these items. To continue, item 45. Find the value of m minus n over m plus n minus m over n if m is 20 and n is 10. So this is just a, ran, um, a substitution item. So we substitute m and n directly, so we'll get 20 minus 10 over 20 plus 10 minus 20 over 10. So we just evaluate that. So uh, dealing with the first fraction, 20 minus 10, that's 10. So 10 over 20. We can write this uh, in simplest terms as 1 half. And then we add 10 minus 20, that's negative 10. And then we divide it by 10. So negative 10 over 10, that's negative 1. Then again, uh, 1 half plus negative 1, that's the same as saying 1 half minus 1. So 1 half minus 1, that's equal to 1 half minus 2 over 2. And that gives us negative 1 half as an answer. So uh, comparing this with the four choices, we have choice A to be the answer. For item 46, we can use the concept of factoring. So y minus 1 divided by y squared minus 1. Now recall the factoring trick a squared minus b squared. Since it's a difference of two squares, we can uh, factor it to their difference times their sum. So a minus b times a plus b. Now, this y squared minus 1, I can write it as y squared minus 1 squared, technically. So we're just going to get the difference of y and 1. So y minus 1, and then multiply it to their sum. So y plus 1. So this fraction, y minus 1, all over y squared minus 1, I can write it as y minus 1 divided by, in factored form, y minus 1 times y plus 1. And we can see that there's a common factor of y minus 1. We can cancel that, leaving 1 at the top and the bottom. So this simplifies to 1 over the only remaining factor in the denominator is y plus 1. So we have choice B as our answer. Now alternatively, we can try to use the substitution method. We can uh, we can substitute any value that we want. Let's say we substitute y equals 0. Now, if, y, if I let y equals 0, then this expression becomes 0 minus 1 divided by 0 squared minus 1. And this equals negative 1 over negative 1, which equals 1. So let's try to check with the choices. Choice A, 1 over 0. Uh, that's already not a value that is valid, so we can cross answer A out. Now, for item B, it's going to be, we're going to get 1 over uh, 0 plus 1. So this is indeed 1 equals 1, and this equals 1. So we can uh, consider this. Uh, but that's just to check that uh, choices C and D are wrong. So let's try choice C. So we're going to get 1 divided by 0 minus 1. That's equal to 1 over negative 1, and this gives us negative 1. So answer C is indeed wrong. And finally, for choice D, y over sorry 1 over y squared so 1 over 0 squared that's still 1 over 0 so same reason as a it's not a valid value so from the four choices we can still cancel a c and d giving us choice b so whatever method it works so that's for item 46 continuing item 47 what is the average of all even integers from 2 to 20 now this will be uh, the thought that everybody will have in mind. So all I, all I have to do is I just have to add 2, 4, 6, 8 until 40 and divide it by the number of terms, which is 20. Since we have 20 even numbers because we're adding from the first even number to the 20 at even number. So we would expect 20 terms in the sequence, which, sorry, uh, there, there are 20 terms from 2 to 40. Now, what we have to notice is that this is an even distribution. What do I mean by even distribution? They, it, well, they have a common difference of 2. So they're evenly spread apart by a difference of 2. Now, if, if a set of values is evenly distributed, all we have to do is simply take the median or the middle value in statistics. Now, the middle value, if you list, this, uh, if you list them all down, you'll get that the middle two terms, since there are 20 terms, so since there are 20 terms, uh, I would want to get the average of the 11, sorry, the 10th and the 11th term to get the median from, uh, from our basic statistics class. You would get that the 10th term is 20 and the 11th term is 22, so the 10th and the 11th even number. 
So since we have to get the average of those two, we're just going to get this. So the 10th term plus the 11th term divided by 2. And this gives us 42 over 2. And this gives us 21. And in fact, it is the answer. So uh, 21 is indeed the answer to item 47. Now, just an alternative uh, way to see. Suppose we try to uh, do this. And then we try to add all the terms one by one. Here's a formula that I'm introducing to you guys the sum of the first n even positive integers. So if I have the first 20, since 2 to 40, that's the first 20 even positive integers, what I have to substitute to n is 20. So if I, to get the sum of the first 20 even positive integers, I would have 20 times 20 plus 1. So this numerator, I can write it as 20 times 20 plus 1. So let's try to do that. 20 times 20 plus 1. So I'll write 20 times 20 plus 1. Now, from the cancellation, the 20s will cancel. So what we're left is just 20 plus 1, and 20 plus 1 is 21, so we have 21 as our answer. So just an additional uh, formula or a shortcut that you guys can use, so uh, do, remem do remember this formula. But the main takeaway, if you have an even distributed data, where the difference is constant, so in this case it's 2, then all you have to do is just take the median of this set of values. So the middle term, or the middle term, so that's for item 47. For item 48, Review Masters increases its enrollees by 25% yearly. What is the ratio of enrollees in one year to the enrollees in the previous year? So we are not given with the number of enrollees in one year or the, nor the previous year. So we can try to let a value without loss of generality. So we can start with a random value, let's say 100, so to uh, make our calculations more simple. So let's say this is from one year, and then to get the next year, uh, I would increase it by 25%. Now, 25% or 25 over 100 of 100 students, that's going to give us an additional 25 students. So if there are 100 students in one year, the next year it would have 125. So it will add 25. So from 100, we're going to get 125. So if you want to get the ratio of one year, so let's say the year that there were 125 students to the previous year, which is going to have 100 students, uh, the ratio that we will get is 125 is to 100. Now, to simplify this ratio, we can divide both 125 and 100 by 25, their common factor, and we're going to end up with 5 is to 4. So divide both sides by 25. So we would get choice C as our answer. Now, to generalize everything, so suppose we have X students in one year. So to get the next year, I would have to get X plus 25% of X. So to write it generally, I would have to get 25% of x first. So the 25% of x is 25 over 100 times x. And 25 over 100, I can write it in simplest forms as 1 over 4. So this is just equal to 1 fourth x. So 1 fourth x. So x plus 1 fourth x, that's going to give me 5 fourths x. So x plus 1 fourth x. So x here is technically 4 over 4x, so that's going to equal 5 over 4x. So from x increasing it by 25%, we're going to get a total of 5 over 4x number of students. So comparing this year to the previous year, we can get the ratio 5 over 4x is 2x. So same thing, we can cancel the common factor of x and we'll get the ratio 5 fourths is to 1. And we can obviously rewrite this as 5 is to 4. So we multiply uh, both 5 fourths and 1 by 4 to get our final ratio of 5 is to 4. So either you solve it using the general case or you let a value to be the number of enrollees in one year. The ratio is going to be constant anyway, so we can really assign any values. So that's the main takeaway for this item. Just like the fact that if you have a variable given and a variable answer, we can let a variable, we can let a 
specific value. We can assign a specific value. For example, in this example, we can set y equals 0 and then just check the result. So same concept as with this item. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in part 13. Bye bye.